The use of computers and computing equipment has grown astronomically in the past two decades. Computers have become ever-present and essential in our lives and workplaces. At the same time, this equipment has seen unprecedented rates of obsolescence, creating mountains of electronic waste. Today, on average, personal computer equipment is replaced every two years, and businesses often replace their equipment every three to four years. Consequently, computer buyers are faced with new questions and decisions. What computer should we buy? And probably even more challenging, what should we do with the old ones? When it comes to disposal, a lot is at stake. Despite recent improvements, electronics are still made with toxic materials. For example, monitor glass and circuit boards contain large quantities of lead, which cause birth defects, nervous system disorders, and brain dysfunction, especially in children. Other very toxic metals, such as mercury, beryllium, and cadmium, are found in the equipment as well. The plastics also are a problem, as they contain highly polluting flame retardants. Apart from the environmental and health impacts, there are other risks. Unless we take great care to totally erase our very confidential data stored in our computers, digital assistants, and cell phones, our privacy is at risk. Businesses become vulnerable to the loss of intellectual property or confidential customer data, which can lead to criminal and civil liabilities that can cost millions. Most individuals and companies want to dispose of their e-waste responsibly, so they seek out an electronics recycler or asset recovery company. Unfortunately, all too often these e-waste recyclers are not recyclers at all. We've all seen these claims of electronics recyclers and asset recovery companies who will tell you they're diverting this equipment from landfills, they're in compliance with all regulations, and they are using environmentally sound recycling. But the fact is that U.S. and Canadian regulations do not adequately cover this toxic waste stream. So we have plenty of companies who are simply loading up seagoing containers and sell it to the highest bidder, frequently to countries in Africa and Asia. So they're getting rich at the expense of your goodwill and your data security and ultimately human health and the environment. Few had witnessed the cyber age nightmare in China until the Basel Action Network, BAM, had set an investigative team to Guangdong province in 2001. Since it began receiving its first load of imported e-waste about 12 years ago, the Chinese township area of Guiyu has been transformed from a small rice-growing village into a bustling, sprawling junkyard for much of the world's electronic waste. Ban revisited the scene again in 2008, only to find that things had gotten far worse. In the Guiyu area, one can find whole villages of migrant workers from China's rural regions living among the piles of e-waste. They sort computer components and openly burn them in fields or large indoor fireplaces, releasing toxic smoke and ash. Toner powder is inhaled as it's swept by hand from cracked, discarded printer cartridges. Thousands of people are employed cooking circuit boards over coal-fired burners, breathing in lead-tin solder vapors for hours on end as they pluck the chips off the boards. The chips are then taken in buckets to primitive acid stripping operations along the riverways, where hot acid baths are used to extract tiny fractions of gold, while workers breathe toxic fumes and flush residues right into the river. Computer monitors are cracked open and leaded glass is dumped into old irrigation ditches. All of the well water in Guiyu is now contaminated. Samples taken by Ban in the local river revealed levels of lead 2,400 times the World Health Organization's threshold level for drinking water. And since Ban's first visit, scientists have conducted further analyses of human hair, water, sediments, and rice, and have recorded some of the highest levels of dioxins, brominated flame retardants, heavy metals, and other pollutants ever discovered anywhere on Earth. Ban's next investigative assignment took them to Lagos, Nigeria, a sprawling metropolis and port for much of West Africa. Computers and other IT equipment increasingly arrive on African shores from Europe and America, ostensibly to be sold in the marketplace to be reused. 
Exporters can claim that this practice extends the lives of computers, helps the poor, and allows them to bridge the digital divide. Unfortunately, the vast majority of computers, televisions, monitors, and printers that arrive in Legos each month were found to be non-functional and non-repairable. They end up stacked in cavernous warehouses or more often dumped near residential areas and burned, releasing persistent, highly toxic pollutants into the air and water. I will tell you that we have greater percentage of those that cannot be used than those that can be used. Uh, honestly speaking, I would say 75% of these items are not usable. The gases are very hazardous, they are obnoxious, they contain toxic components. They are quite carcinogenic substances. And the incidence of uh, such terrible disease like cancer is very high now in Nigeria. Hazardous waste should not go from developed to developing. So uh, the exporting country must put in strict controls. If we are talking of a global village, a common future, a common destiny for all the peoples of the world, it is only fair and uh, morally right to be sure that all sides uh, are safe at the end of the day.